Yeah. And and the publishing company, Yuan, um, they invited me to meet uh, Mr. Leo, and the, who wrote the book about me searching for my son. And while we're having this this meal and these little spring chickens, I remember everybody was pressing me, come on, Phil, you know, like, why don't you write your version of the story? It'd be really exciting. You mean here in Taiwan? Uh, here in Taiwan. This was happening... This straight, was happening in Taiwan. Straight after the concert. Okay. And, um, and I... I I was a bit reluctant, a bit nervous, but something inside of me said, no, this is the right thing. And then I was really lucky. Jonas Ho turned up on the scene. Yeah, how did he turn up? Well, now that's another real amazing story. Right. Well, let's, ex let's explain. He's Taiwanese, but he grew up in New Zealand? Oh, he lives in New Zealand. He's a Kiwi. He's a Kiwi. Like he was born what? there? No, no. Oh, he was okay. born in Taiwan, but right. uh, we okay. claim him as our own now. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, Jonas, I, I, I was planning to come, because I'd never seen uh, Jodie at all. Mm -hmm. I'd never seen her in concert. I just had many of her CDs. So I thought, maybe I'll go over and to, to a concert. So I was checking out on the internet and um, not having too much success. And then it was like the following night, I got this phone call, and I thought maybe it was a, uh, an inter internet hacker or someone like that ringing me up, asking me if I'd like to go to, to Jody's concert with all expenses paid. And I thought, this has got to be a crock. <laughs> this is not... <laughs> I, really? That's what you thought? Yeah, you yeah. just never thought. I, right? I, I, I did, it seems too much surreal that... Someone from out of nowhere rings me up in New Zealand and asks me this. Well, in the meantime, everybody was trying to, allo I mean, trying to locate where you are and I get a hold of you. So from nothing to finally locating you somewhere in the mountains, right? <laughs> I can say that. Yes. So it's amazing how we, we're professional at this, aren't we? Yes, yes. And <laughs> um, when Jonas come to see me, um, I, I asked him to come around the next night because I wanted to digest what he was saying first. What what was he doing? Uh, what does he What does he do in New Zealand? Uh, besides writing books, because he does he writes books. He's so I he's think, just a writer. Yeah, full he's time. a writer of books. No, no, but he also works in real estate. Oh, okay. And yeah, he's just. But he's an amazing family man. Their family is just really amazing. Okay. But he turned up at, at my home with his wife, and then he said, "I." Oh, I'll, I'll, brought the tickets and that, and I was going, oh, yes, yes, okay, you know, still not believing it. And then I looked towards his wife, Amy, and Amy looked at me with this most sincere look and said, Phil, it is true. <laughs> I didn't believe it. And honestly, I was squeezing my arm in disbelief. I could not believe it. And since then, Jonas has helped me throughout. Uh, I sort of turned to him when I was writing the book, and for his great guidance. He's a, he's a genius, the guy. Wow. How many, how long has it been since starting the book and till it's finished? <laughs> I, I think because I, uh, I wrote too much information. Oh, you actually wrote the whole thing yourself? I, I wrote the whole, uh, the manuscript, okay? Okay. I wrote the initial manuscript. Yeah. And there was, probably there could have been more than over a thousand pages and Jonas kept on sending me away <laughs> and he said some of it and I'll be honest with you because Jonas was always forthright with me that's where the Kiwi bit comes in when he talks direct he said some of it's literature Phil really good literature but some of it is a bit uh bit wishwashy okay yeah you need to up upgrade it so he sent me away, and it was quite complex because we were writing it. We ended up writing it because I'm writing it for Taiwan. I'm mm -hmm. not writing it for New Zealand. Sure. So I'm writing it for Taiwan. How do you transmit the message to Taiwanese? You don't write the whole thing in English. That's what Jonas asked you no, to think no, about? 
no, no, that's what I, I oh, asked thought them. I, I thought about it. I thought it's got to be translated. Mm -hmm. It's got to be translated by someone at, at the highest level. Well, I, I discovered that Jonas was he's an exceptional translator, but he's an exceptional author. And with a lot of discussion when we were going through my manuscript, was, which was too much, uh, I thought, maybe I'm writing this story too much about the I, me, the mm -hmm. my perception. I'd like to have a balance how the Taiwanese people thought about me through the search. Who else could I ask mm. but Jonas? And he's, oh, he's just really amazing. Everybody loves him. He, 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 he's just He's just put the whole balance back into the storyline, and uh, I give him huge credit. Uh, he is he is my co-author, and he and I'm 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 honoured to be able to to actually write a book with him. Right now, there is one thing that I you know I mean I've known you all these years, but there was one thing that I don't think you ever mentioned to me personally is that I realized that when you went to the government in New Zealand and asked for help in searching for Reuben and how you didn't have any success, and then you came over, boldly came over to Taiwan and, and approached New Zealand um, representative office for some help and you didn't get any help, you stormed to the presidential office building. Yes, yes. You, you really did? Yes. By, I, by yourself? Uh, yes. Um, uh, I had some people with me. You did? Uh, uh, there was two wonderful Taiwanese woman who were students with Reuben in Dunedin. Oh, I get it. Yeah, uh, but it, that was my idea. And there was also, there was also the, um, there was another Kiwi guy with me. Mm. Uh, but, you know, like I, I worked strategy out with him, but I, I, I was, I was devastated and everything was urgent and every moment counted as far as what I was concerned. And it was supposed to be like a low-level search, a low-level search. And I thought, this is not going to sort it out. You wanted a high-profile search. Yes. There's a point why people have low-level searches. Mm -hmm. But I, I believe, knowing my son and his love of nature, I, I just, I had a gut, strong gut feeling. Mm -hmm. But uh, as for the representatives here, and, and I, I, I can't speak highly enough of them on a personal level. <laughs> okay. uh, I, I'm, and I don't want to get into the politics of it. But um, people shouldn't, you know, there's a point where politics should be put aside and where people should be, get, should be given help regardless of the p political agenda of the, con the countries involved. Mm. Uh, but there was, it was, it was, it was tense. It was very hard for me to to do the searching and then negotiate at the same time. Mm -hmm. So I was searching and negotiating all the time. But the blessing was the Taiwanese police, even though I had some hard, heavy discussions with them, they always looked at it with great balance mm -hmm. and they respected me as a father. All right. And they used to go to the temple and pray for me. Mm. The hardest man of all, Tony Tao, for me, he was the one that went straight to the temple and prayed for me and Reuben. All right. uh, I met him the other night and he's, he's changed. He's, he's not, I call him the ice man, but because he, he was always, he's almost like a James Bond sort of character except he wasn't trying to be charming, but he was, he had a, a, a criminals would have been scared of him, intimidated by him. Okay. But he was a precise man and a, a brilliant policeman. All right, great. Uh, and seeing him again, it was amazing. That is great. Well, let's take a break and we'll continue more with Phil Chernigovsky and his story.